Hi, hello students. Welcome back to India's most comprehensive online learning platform, Baiju's Exam Prep. This is Anil Prasad Sorampudi and in this session, I'm going to explain you people an important topic that is how to organize the bus system within the CPU. Why we need to organize the bus system? Right after you design the bus system, an important aspect of the entire CPU is to organize the bus system since using the bus system, CPU needs to make many transfers to the memory, to the registers and the I.O. devices. So, in order to make these transfers happen in a hassle-free environment, CPU can follow either of the approaches of the following that I am going to state. So, let us start. In this session, we are going to discuss about isolated I.O. and a memory mapped I.O. Understand carefully, when you look at a bus system, bus system comprises of three things. There are three lines you can that you can see. First one is an address bus. This is an address bus. This is a data bus. The third one is something called a control bus. What is this? Address bus filled up is filled up by the address of the location from which or to which either reading or writing to happen. For an instance, the CPU wants to make a transfer to the main memory for which the address bus should be filled up with the address. Let us say 250. The address bus holds 250 which is going to state the location at which the data to be written. Now the data bus contains the actual data byte that is to be written within that specific address which is in the address bus. What is the control bus here? This control bus will carry a control command. Now to understand this control command, first of all, let us understand how this bus system is totally organized. See, there are three ways the total bus system can be organized. The first one is distinct I.O. The first one is a distinct I.O. Second one is isolated I.O. as in the screen. And the third one is memory mapped I.O. Excuse me. What is the difference between distinct I.O., isolated I.O. and memory mapped I.O.? Understand that there are two primary locations for the CPU. The first one is memory. Second one is I.O. devices. In order to transfer the data, CPU has two primary locations. If you do not consider the registers, the registers are the local uh, locations to the CPU. CPU needs to, needs to make a transfer to the memory as well as the I.O. So in order to make this transfer, CPU can follow any of these approaches of organizing the bus system. The first one is a distinct I.O. Second one is an isolated I.O. And the third one is a memory mapped I.O. What is the distinct I.O.? Distinct I.O. meaning two separate bus systems will be organized by the CPU, will be used by the CPU. One is for memory and one more is for I.O. It is completely distinct. Whenever CPU wants to make a transfer to the I.O. devices, it uses one bus system. Whenever it ne uh, CPU needs to make a transfer to the memory, it needs another bus system. It uses another bus system. But distinct I.O. requires a separate I.O. processor. Distinct I.O. cannot be implemented in all the systems since it requires, as it requires, separate I.O. processor. Using a separate I.O. processor is not economical. So what we do is, we will follow either of these approaches. The first one is an isolated I.O. Second one is memory mapped I.O. By using these three, these two approaches, we can organize the bus system and we can make a transfer to memory as well as the I.O. devices. Now understand, you can completely understand what is this control line.
Now stay focused. There are three lines, as I told you. Address, data, and control. Right? This control command um, generally is used to carry a control. Uh, this control line is generally is used to carry a control command. What is this control command? Control command can be a status command. By using a status command, CPU wishes to see if there is any error in the transmission. Second one is a control command to control the peripheral devices. For an instance, if there is a transfer to the IO device such as a CD, CPU must be able to write at a specific track. For that, CPU needs to seek the head to the specific track. By using a control command, CPU will be able to control the device. And the third one is input command. Fourth one is output command. My control line can carry any of these commands. When the CPU loads this control line with a status command, that means that the CPU wants to see if there is any error in the transmission. There is a transmission happening in the transmission. If the transmission is proper or not, CPU would like to find out by using a status command. Control command, as I told you, that CPU is uh, does want to control the, the physical activity of the system, physical activity of the IO, input and output device. For an instance, CPU wants to rewind a tape drive by using a control command, specific control command, tape drive will be rewinded. Next thing is CPU wants to seek the head to the desired position. By using one more control command, CPU will be able to control the IO device in such a way that the head will be sought to the specific position. And the third one is an input command. Input command and output command is going to distinguish in between input data and output data. If the CPU wants to input the data, then input command will get enabled. If the CPU wants to output the data, then output command will get enabled. Input meaning from the IO device to the memory, output meaning from the memory to the IO device. So understand carefully. What is the difference between isolated IO and a memory mapped IO? In the isolated IO, in order to distinguish in between the memory transfers and the IO transfers, CPU uses one more control line. This is control line 1 and this is control line 2. CPU uses two different control lines. CPU uses the same address line, same data line, but there are two control lines to distinguish the transfers in between memory transfer as an IO and an IO transfer. Now, let us say CPU wants to make a transfer to the memory. At that time, the control line 1 will be active. The control line 2 will be disabled. That means that, that means that current transfer is initiated to and from the main memory. If the control line 2 is active, 1 is inactive. Active meaning, if the control line 2 is in a 1 state, that means that the control line 2 is in active state. That means that CPU wants to make a transfer to IO device. So, CPU will be able to distinguish in between the memory and the IO device transfers by using two separate control lines. Okay. Now, what is the memory mapped IO? In the memory mapped IO, what CPU does is CPU will not use any different control lines. It will use only one control line. There is no separate control line. It uses the same address line, same data line and the same control line. But here the transfers are made in the following way. Let us focus. See, for an instance, my main memory within the system is let us say 1000 locations. My main memory size is equal to 1000 and there are IO devices and each and IO devices has a few buffers. Every IO device is connected via an interface and interface also has some storage locations and there are IO devices. There are four IO devices, IO1, IO2, IO3, IO4. Okay. And all these IO devices also has some storage locations. Let us say IO device one has 50 storage locations. That meaning that, that means that 
there are a total of 50 local uh, buffers for IO device 1. Similarly, 50 local buffers to IO device 2, 50 local buffers to IO device 3, 50 local buffers to IO device 4. Here the thing is, CPU in the memory uh, uh, mapped IO, isolated IO already explained. Okay, in the memory mapped IO uh, will club all the available memory buffers from the IO to the main memory. That means that CPU sees every possible buffer as a part of the main memory only. CPU doesn't consider the existence of the IO devices. Here you can clearly see there are additionally a total of 200 storage elements, storage locations. Now in the memory mapped IO, CPU sees that the total main memory size is equal to 1200. Okay. Now here the thing is the CPU will make a differentiation in between the transfers by using the address space since first 1000 addresses will definitely be falling in the main memory. Next 200 um, addresses will be falling under the IO address range. Now here CPU uses same address line, same data line and the same control line. Address line 1, This let us say this is uh, address, right? This is data and this is control line. Now same control line but address by using the address bus address line cp will be able to differentiate in between memory transfers and the io transfers if the address is anywhere in between 0 to 1000 then the transfer is initiated to the memory if the address is in between 1001 to 1200 the transfer will be initiated to the io devices in this way cp will be able to make the differentiation, the distinguishing between the memory transfers and the IO transfers. In the isolated IO, separate IO read and write control lines in addition to the memory read uh, write control lines. Separate memory and IO address space, as I already told you, distinct input and output instructions in the isolated. That means that here. Same address, same data, but control line 1, there is control line 1 and control line 2. If control line 1 is active, that means that this data is initiated to the memory. This control line 2 is active, that means that the, this data is initiated to, this transfer is initiated to the IO devices. I will write it here. This is main memory transfer. This is an IO transfer. Memory mapped IO, a single set of read and write control lines. Simple. We do have only one control line. Only one control line will be used in order to communicate with both main memory as well as the IO devices. No distinction between the memory and the IO transfer. CPU will consider everything as the same transfer, but transfer will automatically differentiated by the address space. Memory and IO addresses share the common address space. As I told you, memory is equal to 1000 locations. IO is equal to 200 locations. CPU clubs both and treats everything as a part of the main memory. Reduces the memory address range available. Of course, total 1200. From the total 1200, the actual memory is only 1000. This is the just the main memory space. There is some other storage space is added to the memory space in order to organize it efficiently. Here, in the memory mapped IO, an important thing that you need to remember is CPU uses the memory instructions also to access the IO devices. Generally, IO devices will be accessed by using separate IO instructions. IO instructions are, let us say IN. What is IN? From the IO device to the CPU, a character will get transferred. OUT. What is OUT? From the CPU to IO device, a character will get transferred. So CPU generally employs separate IO instructions to make a transfer to and from the peripheral devices. In the memory mapped IO, since the CPU doesn't treat that there, there is an existence of, a, doesn't consider that there is an existence of a separate IO devices, 
CPU can use memory reference instructions also to access IO devices. CPU employs some instructions in order to access main memory such as load and store. What are the memory instructions? Generally, memory will be accessed by using the instructions like load and store. What is load? Load meaning from the memory to the CPU. Right? Store meaning from the CPU to the memory. Okay. Now, CPU uses same load and store instructions in order, in order to make a transfer also to the I.O. devices. That is, in the memory mapped I.O., CPU uses only memory reference instructions since CPU doesn't acknowledge the existence of the I.O. devices at all. CPU treats everything as a part of the main memory. This is the difference between memory map and distinct I.O. No specific input or output instructions. The same memory reference instructions can be used for all the I.O. transfers. Considerable flexibility in handling the I.O. operations since you just use memory instructions. So it is so flexible. You don't need to have separate instructions. Separate I.O. instructions will add a burden, will add the complexity to the CPU. These are very flexible indeed in terms of, in terms of complexity. That's it from the session. Anil Prasad Surampuri signing off. Thank you so much.